El patio de mi casa presents Las doce caras de la luna An artist interview with Elisa Elvira Episode 1 of 4 3, 2, 1, 0, adelante Hi everybody, my name is Daniel Juro Coiricelaya I'm the co-founder and art director of uh, the art project El Patio de mi Casa And today, we are so pleased to have our first, first, first digital interview with uh, Elisa Elvira, or Elisa Bermudez. Uh, Elisa Elvira is originally from Maracaibo, Venezuela, um, and she has been in the States for quite some time. Right. Um, <laughs> as an, uh, her background, yeah, her background um, is journalism um, and What she has been explorer, exploring while she has been in the States um, is being an educator and also exploring and developing a beautiful body of work uh, in photography. We are really pleased to have uh, Elisa Elvira with us and we will be talking about a little bit of the exhibition that she's sharing with us called Las Doce Caras de la Luna, the 12 uh, Faces of the Moon. Welcome, Elisa. Muchas How are gracias. you today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited, as you know. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we will be doing, we're jumping back and forth in English and Spanish. We will try to in keep it as much as possible in English. Yeah. We're maracuchos. We to be from the same time. We're maracuchos. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's true. Elisa and I actually know each other for quite, quite, quite some time. I think Since that we were, we're one babies. Of our first friends. <laughs> This is the full circle. If our mother, I know, <laughs> I know. I think they're more excited than you and I. <laughs> But it's 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 wonderful that yeah. you know, now as adults we're doing something yeah. like this. They um, need to be oh. interviewed about this. <laughs> <laughs> It took us what forty something years. <laughs> Don't reveal my age. I have a birthday next well, I'm week. Saying mine. I'm saying mine. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> It's 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thank you. How, how are you doing today? How is, how's everything going with you today? Doing good. I'm, I'm still working on, on my website. I, I think I'm like you. I'm like mentally restless. So it's, it's done. <laughs> it's finished. But I'm like, but I could do this and I could add this. Let's make it more interactive. So I'm, I'm done, but I'm not really done yet. <laughs> It's never, it's a never ending, never ending story. Yes. Oh my God. Again, <laughs> revealing our generation. <laughs> I'm only talking about me. I'm only talking about me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, well, would you like to share with us in more into details? Um, where are you from? Um, sure. And what, what has been your journey like um, moving from where you are to right. where you are right now? Oh my God, where, where do I begin? So like you said, I, you and I were born in, in Maracaibo and we've known each other through our mothers. Um, so I grew up in Caracas and then when I was still um, very young, still a teenager, 18, I, I came to the U.S. to study journalism and I, and I stayed here, even though that was not the initial plan, I ended up staying in, in Philadelphia. Um, but I've always liked photography since, since I was a, a teenager. I think the first time I actually expressed any interest in photography, I was 12 years old. And I actually took advantage of my journalism classes and, and, and I took a couple of photography classes through, you know, electives. Um, I think they wanted me to do broadcasting. They were really pushing doing television broadcasting. I'm like, no, I want to do photography because to me I was doing... In, do, in studying international journalism, I was doing mo mostly what, well, what, what was called print journalism at the time. That's almost non-existent today now. It's digital journalism. But I was more, because I was more into print journalism, I wanted to do photography. The two are very connected. Um, but it's become a hobby and, and, and it's something that I'm getting more serious um, into it right now. Now that I'm an educator, usually summers, it's your time off, even though you're still technically working and getting ready for next year, especially now that we have a pandemic. Um, summertime is a great time for me to, to work on other projects. And one of them is it's photography. So it's something that I've done um, on my own. It's almost like I always compare it to learning how to ride a bike or learning to swim. You jump in the water and learn to swim. You, you just get on the bike and start pedaling. So the exactly. learning process... For me, it's not like I'm not a professional photographer. I've just learned by doing. Um, just get mm -hmm. the camera, 
and start shooting. And of course, those two classes that I took um, back in college, they helped me a lot in terms of design. I had no clue about design, not just for photography, mm. but for art in general. So before those classes, I was just taking pictures and random, and I was not thinking of the uh, design of a photograph. After taking those classes, it's, it's almost like my perception completely changed. And now I, I look at a at a movie and I could see the photography in the movie. That didn't happen before. It's like you're speaking, it sounds like you're speaking the language. It's like you learn yeah. a language yeah. in the way that visually photograph, I mean, not only uh, photographers, photographers, I mean, this language is going to kill us. Photographers, uh, photographers <laughs> artists, artists it, it doesn't matter what, there's always those basic cues that is composition balance yeah, and, yeah. and enhancement and so on and, but I, I love i mean thank you for sharing that it's i, sure. I love how hands-on you have been into discovering the craft by making it you know you right. you were hands-on and you you it sounds like also that you have been really enjoying the process of that journey of like oh I know how to do this now and I'm gonna it's so, so that's that's incredible and so empowering you know yeah yeah how many times how many great artists didn't take the the, the path <laughs> and they are the ones that exceed so I, I know sometimes I know. you just need to listen to your heart <laughs> and that's also something I learned in working uh, as a reporter that a lot of the really good journalists that I've personally met they didn't study journalism. I mean, they started in high school and just learned by doing yeah. just the same that I've learned how to photograph or how to be a photographer. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, I, of course, I'm going to try to keep organized the questions because, um, <laughs> but again, I'm winging it here. <laughs> right. <laughs> here we go. Um, I really love what you were talking about there. Um, what would you say was the first time that you started to develop a series and what was that like for you? I think it was um, interestingly enough it was back in 2008 2009 when we had um, that uh, awful recession and a lot of people lost their jobs I was one of those million people who lost uh, their employment and I was unemployed for I would say about two years and I had all this free time in, in my hands. And, and I had done photography before, mostly for those uh, photo classes that I took in college. And I'm always taking, I mean, you can ask any of my friends, I'm always photographing. But I think I took it more seriously when I found myself unemployed and I realized that I actually had a skill that I could use. So I, I did work for a couple of nonprofit organizations um, taking uh, pictures for their events, um, mostly. It was mostly street photography, really. But it was, it was something that I did as a volunteer. So um, it was just for them to get some um, more professional photographs, I, I guess, but also for me to be doing something so that I, I don't get bored, but also to practice as well my, my craft. And I think they used a couple, one of the organizations, they used a couple of my photographs for, for their website for a little while. They don't have it posted anymore. But I think that's, that's when exciting, I started. Though. Yeah. And it was like one of those, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Like you let me take photographs yeah. of whatever you're doing and I build a portfolio. Yeah. And then they get photos for free. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's when I started getting serious uh, about it. And I was like, okay, I can build a portfolio. And then I started thinking of, you know, things I wanted to photograph. I, I don't think I had an area the way that I do right now. I was just going and photograph whatever I, w I was personally interested in. Awesome. It, it's, it's, what, what, a, what an interesting journey because it sounds like you started, of course, if, um, I mean, it was more of a documenting actions and from there you started to learn and curate your eye to start to build things that were beyond um, journalism. Because, and I think that that's fascinating because it's, or at least what I'm understanding is that, of course, you started on the fact of getting facts on images, but then in the building or collecting facts, you have been little by little polishing up and right. blooming, bl blossoming, blooming? Oh Both. my God. Floreciendo. <laughs> Exacto. <laughs> Floreciendo. Creciendo. The word of the day today is... <laughs> Florecer comes from flower, you like a flower blossom. Right. Um, so, 
it sounds like in uh, along that journey you had the opportunity to really learn and enhance the other side of photographs that is not necessarily documenting right. uh it's also capturing moments and and right. you know creating those experiences in a visual way that's powerful that's really yeah. really cool um what what would you like to share with us today i mean is there something of your life or something that you think uh it's important that now that you have a platform not right. only visual but if now that you have a platform that you that you can share verbally with us is there something that you would like to say to new people that may right. be exploring you new crafts that, thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking people much younger than, than you and I who are wondering what to do, how to start. And, and my message is just take a risk, you know, seize the day, carpe diem, um, try it. Uh, sure, a lot of us are more into, you know, looking for jobs because you need the money and, you know, you're in your 20s, you, you got to find a job no matter what. But take the time. Um, maybe over the weekends or whenever you have some spare time. I mean, that's how I do it. I do it in my spare time. Um, practice it. Just go out there and, and, and photograph. Try to mingle uh, network. That's also very important. I think I, I learned a lot about photography in Philadelphia because I, I, I met a while ago a number of photographers and I looked at their craft and what they were doing. So they also set an example for me. So definitely go out there. Like Go, go out of your bubble and, and yeah. try it. That's, that's a great, great, great advice. And I wish, you know, I, I, I think that in a world in where all these new generations are being bombarded with, you know, people that are doing the thing that you should be doing, I wish we, we had a, we could create an environment in where they can hear more of this and less of, let me take a selfie. Um, right. So, I'm know. not a selfie person. <laughs> I think any like, respectable photographer no. is not into <laughs> selfies. I call them portraits, yeah. self-portraits. <laughs> self-portraits, yeah. It's kind of weird, you know, I mean, talking about photography and no judgments to anybody. Yeah. But, and I, 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 I have my share and there was a moment that I was like, oh, let me see a picture. But there's a moment that you realize talking about photography, it's like, when you fall into that little trap, isn't it weird that when you start to see pictures of people that like selfies, it's like, it's the same picture. You just found yes. this odd angle that you think yeah. that that's the best version of you. And you just scroll down and it's like, it's the same picture, it's the same picture, it's the same picture, <laughs> just different outfits. So what I guess I'm trying to say here is like, be, <laughs> besides that, Right. Use the camera and instead of flip using it. the camera to <laughs> flip it and take the picture of what is around. Right, exactly. We have plenty of pictures of you. How about show us what else is there? Right. So I think that is important to for for young people to find leaders right. that teach them and encourage them to open their eyes and look around. So thank you for sharing for that. Sure. And in this positive note, we finish the first episode of four of this series, Las Doce Caras de la Luna, an artist interview with Elisa Elvira. Please stay tuned for the announcement of the next episodes. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at LPTDMCS or visit our website, www.lptdmcs.org. Until next time, and stay safe.